while the 2019 offseason is far from over, the first few waves of free agency have come and gone. With player movement starting to slow down, is a good time to take stock of who the Dallas Cowboys currently have under contract and what a projected depth chart looks like. It helps us see where the team may be focusing their attention in next month's NFL Draft. The Cowboys' offense seems mostly settled for 2019. While I do expect Dallas to add at least one more running back, one could argue that the team could make no additional moves and head into the season with the guys they already have. With the Randall Cobb mitigating the loss of Cole Beasley, Travis Frederick's return, and the hopeful development of Michael Gallup and Connor Williams in their roles, the Cowboys might already be stronger than 2018. But that doesn't mean they're going to pass up opportunities for further upgrades. For now, though, we have who we have. So, what might that depth chart look like if the season started today? Most of this is irrefutable, particularly in the starting lineup. The biggest question mark there is if Jason Witten starts consistently at tight end or is more of a rotating player with Jarwin or some drafted rookie. But for now, we'll defer to the legend. At backup quarterback, Cooper Rush and Mike White will likely duke it out for the backup role. there's a solid case to be made that the loser of that battle might not make the roster at all, freeing up a spot for some other position. But for now we'll keep three QBs, since that's what the Cowboys gave done in recent years. Again, I don't expect Dallas to go into 2019 with just Darius Jackson and Jordan Chun behind Elliott. I wrote more about what the team might do at back of RB earlier this week. I expect someone will be signed or drafted that bumps them down the line, and likely one of them off the team. The offensive line is also fairly certain. I gave a spot to Hinger as the most intriguing player of the other backups, but Dallas may not even keep a ninth lineman. Fleming covers both OT spots and they have great depth with Looney and Swafilo inside. If the team doesn't keep that ninth offensive lineman or that third quarterback, we could easily see those spots going to a seventh receiver or fourth tight end. Dallas likely won't want to cut Schultz even if they draft someone new. And even if they don't, perhaps they want to give Rico Gathers one more try. At WR, the Cowboys could go along with seven in the interest of retaining either Lance Lenoir or Cedric Wilson on the roster. That said, if Dallas does only keep 23 to 24 offensive players, there's nothing that says those extra spots won't go to defense. So no, there aren't big question marks still facing the Cowboys on offense. They have a solid group already in place and may only do minor tweaks between now and September. But it's a good exercise to take this snapshot and see where the opportunities are. 2019 off-season roster projection The ongoing divide between the Dallas Cowboys and franchise defensive end Demarcus Lawrence is starting rise to the top of the 2019 off-season discussion. While Dallas has made a some solid free agent moves in the last week and the draft is still to come, it would seem all for naught if they don't have their top pass rusher next season. That reality gives Lawrence plenty of leverage in these contract negotiations. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, their bargaining position is far from solid. Between the overall to market, Dallas own roster, and their lack of high draft picks, they are almost dependent on DeMarcus' return to maintain a championship caliber defense next year. The consensus top four defensive ends in free agency this year were Lawrence, Jadeveon Clowney, Texans, Trey Flowers, Patriots, and Frank Clark, Seahawks. Three of them, Lawrence, Clowney, and Clark, were franchised by their previous teams. Flowers signed a five-year, $90 million deal to join the Detroit Lions. The Flowers deal, averaging $18 million per year, didn't even set the floor for conversations with these other players. All looking at the $23.5 million that Chicago's Khalil Mack averages as a much closer measure for the money they deserve. According to reports today, the Cowboys and Lawrence are squabbling over about $10 to $12 million over the life of the contract. 
Source tells at The Athletic DFW DeMarcus Lawrence seeks $22.5 million in average salary. Cowboys at $20 million on average. Here's our report from NFL owners meetings, https colon slash slash t dot co slash easy kivigu. Now this doesn't take into account the guaranteed money, which is often the biggest issue with NFL contracts. Average salary is nice but can come back to bite the player if a team releases him in years 4 to 6 as a salary cap casualty. It's the divide between base salary and the original signing bonus that generally makes those moves happen. But whatever the conflicts are in these talks between DeMarcus and Dallas, it doesn't seem like the Cowboys are going to win. Lawrence swore last year he wouldn't play 2019 on a second franchise tag. If he fulfills that vow, as we saw Le'Veon Bell do last year in Pittsburgh, then it leaves the Cowboys with a pretty ugly situation at defensive end. Tyrone Crawford, a solid veteran but needs better player around him to really make an impact. He is currently under investigation for a bar brawl incident a few weeks ago and could miss a few games under the NFL's personal conduct policy. Randy Gregory, started to emerge last year but has been suspended once again for drug use. His status for 2019 is completely up in the air. Taco Charlton, fell out of favor with coaches last year for work ethic and effort issues. Still young but has yet to make any impact relative to being a first-round pick. Kerry Hyder, a free agent signing who flashed talent in 2016 with eight sacks but missed all of 2017 with injury and played out of positions last year. Durant's Armstrong, an intriguing second-year prospect but still completely unproven. That's a motley crew, and even worse if Gregory stays suspended. It would likely lead to a disastrous reminder of years when Dallas tried to cobble together a pass rush out of guys like Jeremy Mincy or Benson Mayoa. We've seen this defense without a consistent pass rush and it's not pretty. Many would argue that it cost Dallas a chance at a title in 2014 or 2016, when they rode a fence into the playoffs but twice got ousted by Aaron Rodgers. The Cowboys project to have a strong offense once again. It would be a shame for the defense, which finally broke out last year, to take a big backward step by losing an impact player like Demarcus Lawrence. Dallas Cowboys did Demarcus Lawrence it'd be one thing if the Cowboys could let someone else pay Lawrence max money and replace him with a somewhat comparable player. Sometimes those deals are out there, but not in 2019. The franchising of Lawrence, Clowney, and Clark has worked to the advantage of the players as it has frozen the market price at max huge deal from last year. Even if none of these players are necessarily on max level, or have produced as consistently as he has, they can argue that Khalil's deal plus one year of general inflation sets a good price for them. Plus, as they're all franchised, none of them are available to help give their teams another option. Nobody is going give up the first round picks to sign a franchise tag player when they could just re-sign their own. The Cowboys are especially hindered by not having a 2019 draft pick until late in the second round. A late first round pick would hardly be expected to replace Lawrence right away, but it would at least help their overall position. Instead, Tank and his agent see a team that needs a catalytic edge player and has no reasonable way of acquiring one. This isn't the increasingly undervalued world of NFL running backs, where a team felt like they could afford to go without an elite talent like Le'Veon Bell. Dallas might be hoping to call DeMarcus Bluff and at least have him play at the $20.5 million that his franchise tender pays. After all, that's a year of earning Lawrence can't get back. But if Tank sticks to his guns then it's the Cowboys who could lose, and lose big, by squandering their last season with Dak Prescott on his rookie contract. 2019 may be their best opportunity to go win a title before a huge portion of their salary cap gets tied up at QB. All of these factors show how it's Demarcus Lawrence, and not the Dallas Cowboys, who have the power in these negotiations. Even if you think Lawrence is asking for more than he's worth, it all comes down to what the team is willing to pay. 
If winning next year means anything to the Cowboys, they may have to accept defeat this offseason. Matthew Emmons USA Today The 2019 NFL Draft is officially less than a month away and drawing closer by the day, but don't expect the Dallas Cowboys to be sitting on their hands in the meantime. They've done an outstanding job of adding quality free agents to minimize their draft needs so far, but there is one position they could still stand to upgrade, backup running back. My fellow staff writer, Jess Haney, recently wrote an excellent article entitled, Will Dallas Cowboys Address Backup RB in Free Agency or 2019 Draft? It's an excellent read, and a question a lot of us around Cowboys Nation have been asking ourselves. Everybody's interested in finding out who will become the RB2 behind Ezekiel Elliott in 2019, and so the waiting game begins. Since we have nothing to do but wait, I thought I'd go ahead and throw my two cents in. If it was me, I'd go ahead and add a cost-effective free agent running back to pair with Zeke and then add another one through the draft if one happened to be there I liked in the mid to later rounds. This would free up the Cowboys draft needs even more in my opinion. This of course is where Ty Montgomery comes into play. His name isn't one mentioned all that often amongst the current free agent running backs, but I believe he would make an excellent addition to the Dallas Cowboys roster and wouldn't break the bank to bring aboard either. Free agent RB Ty Montgomery, Jeff Hanish, USA Today Sports, you may not be aware of it, but Ty Montgomery is a native Texan and grew up in the Dallas area. He attended St. Mark's School in Dallas where he was a five-sport athlete in football, track, baseball, basketball, and lacrosse. From there he took his talents to Stanford, where he played wide receiver under head coach David Shaw. You're probably more familiar with his story from there. He was drafted in the third round of the 2015 NFL Draft by the Green Bay Packers. He started his career playing wide receiver for them, but out of necessity was moved to running back. It was at RB he found his niche in the NFL and turned into one of the more versatile runners and pass catchers in the league. I'm really intrigued with the things Ty Montgomery would bring to the table as the Dallas Cowboys RB2. He's someone who I believe could help lighten the load on Zeke's shoulders as both a runner and receiver in the passing game. His background as a receiver would also give the Cowboys an emergency WR if worst comes to worst. What I also like about Montgomery is his ability to contribute on special teams. I think he could immediately be an upgrade as their kick returner. He's averaged 22.7 yards per kick return in his career. Having special teams ability is something valued in backup players and luckily he's no slouch in this area. Ty Montgomery is only 26 years old and won't turn 27 until January 22nd. His ability to contribute as a runner, receiver, and a returner is really intriguing and the Cowboys may not be able to find that kind of trifecta in an RB in the draft. That's why I would go ahead and lock him up pre-draft, and then add a rookie if there's one available in the draft I truly like. What do you think about the Cowboys adding Ty Montgomery pre-draft? The signing of free agent safety George Loka over the weekend has put a big question mark over the position for the Cowboys. He was back up last year in Minnesota and is on just a one-year contract, so does Dallas expect him to start? And if so, what does that mean for Jeff Heath and Xavier Woods? Had Dallas signed someone like Earl Thomas or Eric Berry, or even several of the less lofty names that were on the open market, then a starting role wouldn't even be up for debate. We'd only be asking which player between Heath and Woods would be moving to the bench. But Aloka doesn't bring that same pedigree. He only started three games last year for the Vikings due to injuries, serving a primary reserve all of 2018. This was after he'd been a five-year starter with the Cincinnati Bengals from 2013 to 2017. It's important to fully understand Aloka's situation. He was released by the Bengals in the middle of the 2018 preseason after they'd spent a second-round pick on Jesse Bates.
saved over $5 million in salary cap space on the deal, having just signed George to a five-year, $30 million extension in 2016. Mid-August is a bad time to become a free agent, and especially at 28 years old. Most starting jobs are already decided and even primary backup roles are generally filled out. Teams are mostly assessing their developmental players by this point. It says something that Mike Zimmer, Vikings head coach, decided to add a loca just a few days after he was released by Cincinnati. Remember, Zimmer was the defensive coordinator for the Bengals from 2008 to 2013. That means, he helped draft Aloka in 2012 and had him as a full-time starter the following year. Safety George Aloka Most teams would have waited until after week one to add a veteran like Aloka, so that his contract would not be fully guaranteed. But Minnesota, with Zimmer likely the driving force behind the move, scooped George up almost immediately. This wasn't because the Vikings were hurting at safety, either. They had multi-time pro bowler Harrison Smith and veteran Andrews and Deha locked in as starters, plus Anthony Harris as a solid backup. The point here is that this isn't the time to blindly exclaim, he didn't even start with his last team. These weren't typical circumstances. That said, there is a some question as to what George Aloka's role will be with the Dallas Cowboys. Jeff Heath has been full-time starter the last two seasons and is still in his physical prime. Xavier Woods worked his way into the starting lineup in 2017 and held it for all of last year. With Kevin Frazier also under contract as a backup with three years of experience, one could ask why Dallas would sign Aloka if they didn't intend him to start. At the least, George should be competing with Heath and Woods for a top spot on the depth chart. But don't expect him to be handed anything. Dallas will likely open training camp with Heath and Woods as the starters, as they tend to do whenever the previous year's starters return. Aloka will get opportunities but will have to take the job away from one of them. Dallas Cowboys S. Jeff Heath Mark J. Rebelas USA Today Sports, I think the guy who should be most worried is Heath. The Cowboys can save $2.5 million of his cap hit if he's released, which is money that could go towards mid-season contract extensions with Dak Prescott or Amari Cooper. Those savings could also simply be rolled over into the 2020 cap if they aren't used. With Jeff set to be a free agent in 2020 anyway, Dallas would have less reason for loyalty over Xavier Woods and the two years left on his deal. Also, Aloka is more likely to fit in at strong safety. That's been Heath's role the last two years. Dallas won't necessarily cut Heath if he loses his starting job, given Jeff's veteran experience and his standout ability on special teams. His $2.95 million cap hit isn't too high for a primary veteran, and especially one who can play both positions. Still, this isn't certain. Xavier Woods is still young in raw in some ways, and prone to draw penalties with his big hits. If he doesn't polish his game more in 2019, Dallas could wind up liking their two veterans more. It's even possible that it will be Aloka who winds up on the bench. Nobody on the current roster really stands out as a fourth safety, so perhaps the Cowboys see George as just a solid depth option as he was for the Vikings. In fact, this morning's news on Aloka's contract with Dallas might suggest a lesser role. The Cowboys signed George Aloka to a one-year, minimum salary benefit contract that will count $735,000 against the cap. He will make a $930,000 base salary and $90,000 in bonus money. Of the base salary, $210,000 is guaranteed. https colon slash slash t dot co slash smooch clearly, a lot is still up in the air after this signing. While George Aloka is intriguing and has more experience than probably all of Dallas' other safeties combined, he's being given bare-bones deal that could mean he's going to be nothing more than a backup or rotation player. Nothing is guaranteed. What's more, we still have the 2019 NFL Draft to consider.
One thing this Loka deal tells us is that Dallas is hardly out of the business of acquiring safety talent, and could still go as high as their 58th overall pick. If that happens, we could again be looking at the disparity in Heath and Aloka's contracts. Aloka would make way more sense as the experienced, versatile, and far cheaper reserve at that point. For that matter, there's no guarantee that George will be on the Cowboys' 2019 roster. They may simply be taking a flyer on one of the last decent free agent safeties available, creating some competition for training camp without any sense of major commitment. So no, this signing didn't answer much. If anything, it may have created even more questions. We may have to wait until final cuts to know how George Aloka truly impacts things at safety, if he does it all.